what's good everybody hit that like button share subscribe you know what it is you know how we do let's get it rocking we got today dana white brain surgery scan reveals black spots in troubling health update ahead of ufc 306 he went to a doctor's appointment and they looked in his brain they to do that they used the mri and they saw black spots and i know that because of different medical situations i myself have been through so seeing black spots what he's saying it shows an emptiness a lack of missing something so there's uh not his parts of his brain isn't missing what he's saying is it's non-reactive the test they did it was non-reactive so he's saying that it's not good because he doesn't know why his certain parts of the brain isn't reacting to the test so he wouldn't know that it's up to the doctor to figure that out and the uh base calls um let's get started this is crazy leviticus chapter 13 in the seventh day the priest shall look on the skull okay we're talking about here with a skull think what a skull is s-c-a-l so we're not talking about what you think s-k-u-l-l is s-c-a-l-l -L. think of scalding like something burning so you're marked so it's like you're marked because something happened to you think of it as chicken pox and then if you scratch and play with them it leaves a mark it's same thing here all right seventh day the priest shall look on the skull and behold if the skull be not spread in the skin nor in sight deeper than the skin so they're looking at so basically think of a rash so we're looking at a rash how much of the skin does it cover and if it does how much of it and is it there if you have anything at all they called it a skull s-c-a-l-l -L. so a skull like scalding and if you think of scolding it they s-c-o-l like they changed the, our english so crazy that's to try and make it so that we can't understand the book that's what the thing you got to understand it's not so much that history did stuff now i'm gonna tell you new versions of the bible take out verses that we've already tracked down i tracked down so many i just stopped they out of the new testament the reason i use king james version they take out stuff so that's important so here what i'm reading is the base of what was here so that's why i like the king james version i know for sure there's not missing verses because when i read through it they already went through on new testament the god there's a guy you can go on youtube and go look at it he goes through all the stuff that's missing from the new testament and they did it on purpose to not make a complete view because when you're reading through when i'm really reading in between the lines it gives you a different message and they stopped it to try and prevent the messages now I already went through, through a few of those books here now. It already explains something, already explained things that you're not going to find in the New Testament versions and things. I've been at the Bible forever. It's not like it's been my whole life. So when it comes to this stuff, it's just second nature. When it comes to reading the Bible, all that stuff, interacting with the Bible, understanding the Bible is second nature because I had to. Why people were home playing video games. I had to learn this. I had to stand before in front of a church, in front of a church with scripture and verse understand i had to present this to adults that watch and monitor every word that came out my mouth that's why i go so hard because they put it over me as serious as it is, as it is for you to be in bed on time or not to be doing crime that's as serious as the bible was for me so what it is the people now it was that serious to me in my household so thank god and i'm very grateful to all you parents raising kids keep them in the bible keep them in church keep them Church is for fellowship. It's not for the end all be all. It's the fellowship with others so that they can be motivated to get deeper in the word. And that's what I had. I had a lot of motivated people, a lot of adults that pushed me as a kid to be better, that expected much of me. So I showed up to the test. As God says there, I showed up, tested, defeated the test and became deeper and more wise because of the pressures they put on me. So I'm very grateful for all the people in my life that put this Bible in front of me. And judge told me this is by which you'll be judged and was like, this is by which we're going to judge you as parents. I was so grateful to be raised that way and to be looked at that way. That's that's like in value. There's, there's no value to it. It's priceless. I thank God for it. It made me a better man. Let's go now. All right. Not spreading the skin, nor in sight deeper than the skin. Then the priest shall pronounce him clean. OK, so now we're looking at who has a mark on them and who doesn't. They're clean. Okay, what are they doing? Mark of the beast. Come on now. 
And if you read, people were getting there. The Mark of the Beast, when you read deeper into it, you realize that it becomes a physical feature that comes up with the appropriated inside injection that is allegedly is going to be placed on people in the future. It comes with a physical mark where you can see that a person has it. Not that's placed on you by government, but because of the reaction. So it's like a breakout. So some type of reaction. Again, the Bible, nothing's new under the sun. So there'll be a scalding mark, allegedly, a skull on a person whenever they get whatever marks coming in the future they may have a breakout they may have all type of they may have sores they may have some type of negative reaction that's going to be physically seen and physically able to tell that they're unclean again let it ring because all that is is wake up wake up man wake up that's all that is i don't we don't stop nothing let's keep going the devil's a liar and all of his people working for him are liars too y'all liars man and that's why we're on the net doing the word because y'all be lying to people telling them whatever like god's not going to hold you accountable like you're not going to go to hell for it go to hell boy these dudes be mad crazy they don't use the book or nothing they don't read nothing but they're telling people how to live their life how when you don't even know who god is they don't have a clue these dudes they're against god they're against the cross i just read that against the cross come on man that's what the a lot of these dudes are they're against god and then they hide it by trying to talk about worldly stuff come on let's move let's go shall pronounce him clean and he shall wash his clothes and be clean but it's it if the skull spread much in the skin after his cleansing then the priest shall look on him and behold if the skull be in his night at a stay and that if him of him and behold if the skull be in his night and at a stay and that if the skull be spread in the skin the priest shall not seek yellow hair right there he shan't he, he won't seek yellow hair where's yellow hair where do we see yellow hair where do we see yellow hair up in the air all types are on the screen come on man it says yellow hair right here in the bible that's what i'm saying when you read read you're like what I was like, what? Years ago. This stuff I was realizing years ago before people picked the Bible up. I'm like, dang, Dragon Ball Z is blasphemy? I was upset because I like Dragon Ball Z. I was like, I can't believe they blaspheme. That's crazy. Seek yellow hair. He is unclean. <laughs> but if the skull in that there is black hair grown up therein, the skull is is healed. He is clean right there so when they don't have the extra mark when just the basics are there you know the person's clean when there's extra stuff and it's not clean cut let's be like if you seen goku with a rash you would know he's unclean you'd be like what are you doing how you got a rash saying like they're looking at each other a certain way because they're supposed to be decorated presented a certain way presentation okay and the priest shall pronounce him clean if a man also or a woman have in the skin of their flesh bright spots even white bright hot spots then the priest shall look and behold if the bright spots even white bright spots th then the priest shall look and behold if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white if is a freckled spot that groweth in the skin he is clean so look, we're, we're looking at the setup, the characteristics of how God's examining a person. Remember he said, be blemishless. What did I say? We got to be blemishless. So now he's looking at the person, seeing if they're clean. All right. And it, the priest is defining if they're clean or not. And the man whose hair is falling off his head, he is bald. Think of Napa. <laughs> he is clean. <laughs> and he has his hair falling off. His head, he is bald, yet is clean, and he had his hair fallen off with the part of his head toward his face. He is forehead bald, yet is he clean. And if were he he in bald head or bald forehead or white or white reddish sword, it is leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. <laughs> what? It, as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh, 
he is a leprous man. As the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. You get that? God looks at us at levels. He says, okay, you're all right. Okay, you're all right. This right now, this is what he's doing. Because when you see him, you're either clean or unclean before him. Therefore, while you're on this earth, you got to work to be clean. Because once you're gone, you're unclean if you're not good, if you're not good with God. That's why you got to stay good with God. Because if you're dealing with situations like that, he gives you the route to take to get clean again. And he hath his hair falling off with a part of his head toward his face. He is forehead bald, yet is he clean. And if there he is in bald head or bald forehead, a white reddish sword, it is leprosy sprung up in his bald head or his bald forehead. As the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. This plague, this plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent and his head bare. Listen, right there. Crazy. This, yo, this book, King James Version, I don't care, King James Version, these other ones, some of them don't speak like this they like taking out the big words to make it clear no this is the best way because it gives you the information in between guys right there he's considered unclean because not only because his spirit he's bald it's not the hair do you get it it's not the hair it's the skin so what is it that god tells us we're supposed to be clean before all things we do see people think it as if we talked about the part where they were looking at him to wash his body before he ate but are they clean? Are they good before God? Are you clean before God? Again, you could judge whoever you want in the world. You could bring out whatever you want in this world. Are you clean before God? Yes or no? Do you even know? Do you even know the scriptures that you have to get over? Do you know? What does he say? What does God say? What's that song? Sweep behind your own back door before you sweep behind another's. Are you good with God? Are you good with God? All the way around. I mean, are you doing all the things you should be since you want to judge somebody else's life? Judge their behavior. Judge. If your life ain't right, you got something right to get right before God, before you judge someone else's life. Because a lot of people like to judge people's life, but then they got stuff going on in theirs. So why are you judging someone else's life? That's why I give the word. That's why I read the word. Because when you read the word, it's cut and dry, undisputable. If you got a problem with it, you got a problem with God. If you don't understand it, say that. But if you got a problem with the word, you got a problem with God. Point blank period right there. That's why I love the King James Version. It's cut and dry. And it, people have so much trouble reading it. And it's the cleanest read you'll ever do in a book, in a Bible, ever. Cleanest. And I read a lot of other Bibles. A lot. I have the New James. I have the New New Testament Version. I have a couple of them in book version. And Bible versions. They're trash. Because they took out so much. The key things that really bring you to God. They took out. Because they're wicked people. That's what you got to understand. The whole thing that was done, it wasn't that words were left. It wasn't that, oh, they didn't say some stuff from the tablet. It's that they didn't say some. They took stuff out in general to make it read a certain message. And that was the devil. But God let it go through. So people that saying, oh, this book is it. No, then God would have stopped it and the book would have changed. You're trying to say, oh, God didn't know what he's doing. That's what you're inten unintentionally saying, whether you know it or not. That's why I say, are you close with God or not? That's why some people really ain't good with God like they think they are. You got to get closer so you can understand what God's saying. Because there's a scripture in here we're going to get to where, um, in the future where God even talks about this type of thing. People thinking this way and the people that did it, he names them, calls them out and says, look, they did this. You don't worry about what they do. What do I say in this book? So you're still, Jesus parts are still in a book. So you're not missing Jesus' message. You're just missing the entirety of what it all says together. But that's what the King James Version is. Even if they did take something out, it reads clean. I read through this book a couple times. People haven't even read through the whole Bible word for word, verse for verse yet. So how are you going to have any determination you ain't read this book word for word? And not only read it, I wrote it by hand word for word. So here's what I'm saying. When you really get good with God and understand him, you're writing it, you're feeling it, you're understanding it. When you're doing it, writing it, even since a kid I had, they said, write it. That's why I write it, because it gets in your soul. You write it, it becomes part of you. 
it was easy for me to read off a laptop. You see, I've been having more issues reading how I'm doing it now because I got to write it and it's harder to read it if I'm not reading it on a computer screen, even if I got it on a phone. Listen, man, you got to do it the way God shows you. You need it on your soul and your body. It's easy for me to read something on a computer, then go spit it at somebody. It's easy for me to do that, post it online. It's a different thing if I write it and then I write it by hand. It's in my soul and spirit because if I write it, I remember it. I'm looking at it. Even if I don't remember it word for word, I did it in my soul. So it's not about others. It's my soul. But I'm sharing my soul and understanding with others because you got to know this book and have it on your soul. Or when God comes back, you're done. You're going to evaporate and get eviscerated. That's why I'm trying to help people have readings so you can follow up and do the things you need to. All right. A pair of and skin of the flesh. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is his clothes rent. He is rent and his head bare. And he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean unclean all the days wherein the plague shall be in him he shall be defiled he is unclean he but now with jesus what defiles us what comes out of the mouth thank god for jesus because if you had that you will be considered unclean you can't help getting marks on your body but you can't help whether you serve god or not you see you see how deep it gets this is what god saved us from we us happen to be judged this way you have a, a rash on you and they'd be like you're unclean so you would be unable to do and live life the way you're living it because you're unclean before god but when jesus came he's now the way in so therefore this no longer stands right here as it is standing as it is a lot of people will be screwed out of their whole eternity and the leper in in whom the plague is his clean shall his clothes shall be rent and his head bare and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry unclean unclean all the days wherein the plague shall be in him the he shall be defiled the he is unclean he shall dwell alone without the camp shall his habitation be right there when you go to hell you go by yourself when you pass away you're alone you face god alone you're not with another person you don't have backup you face god mono e mono all alone even if you're married even if you're a couple you face god alone therefore you get judged for all the sins you did and didn't get repent for right there your god has no respect to persons he's going to judge everybody equally separately one by one just like court just like the judge, when you got to see the judge, what do you do? Do you go in with a bunch of people? No, you go in by yourself and they sit in the stands and watch. Just so as we, we will watch. There will be few that will watch and have God's back and see God do get busy. Because God is a God of, God is a God of judgment. Everything's judged. Everything. Nothing's karma. Karma don't exist. Judgment on everything. You're judged by the life you live, the choices you make. Right there. All right. Also that he the plague of leprosy is is in whether it be a wool woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be the warp or woof of the linen or of woolen, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin, it is a plague of leprosy and shall be shewed unto the midst unto the rest, and the priest shall look upon the plague and shut up. It that hath the plague seven days right there. Seven days they will have to hold them back. That's God. Because I'm telling you, God's gonna judge people. He said you gotta be blemishless. If you got if you got a sore or something, a whitest sword, you're not blemishless. Therefore, we gotta be blemishless. All right. Now we're at first Samuel chapter 16. And he sent and bought him in. Now he was ruddy. And withal of a beautiful countenance. God right there and goodly. Only God can let that be if you're ruddy. Have a beautiful countenance. When you're ruddy, because that's like dirty type. But you still have a beautiful countenance. That's God. He, he Only he can allow that. All right? Right there. And the Lord said, arise. That's why I said, wake up. It's not stay woke. 
it's a rise because y'all are asleep. How you staying woke and you sleep? You already sleep. Well, I want you to stay asleep. I want you to wake up. Wake up. Arise. Okay? Right there by scripture. These dudes weird. Anoint him. This is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him. Right there. We're going to be anointed by God, those who see him, to get into get into the kingdom. You're going to be anointed. God's going to put a certain blessing upon you that no longer can anything tempt you or take you from God. All right? Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Right there. We're going to get judged by God in the midst of everyone. He's not going to hide his judgment. You're not even going to be able to see the person in hell if you go to hell. You're not going to see them. It's so huge you won't be able to see them. Midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul right there. That confirms it. The, the Lord's not going to be in hell. So he's going to depart from these people when they go to hell. He's not going to be around for you right there again. He's not going to hang out with people who are ungodly. He don't got time for that. He needs his people only. And the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord. From the Lord, remember, we spoke and that spirit said, I'll go, Lord, I'll handle it for you. Well, now this is an evil spirit sent by the Lord. The Lord's like, you know what? Mm. And an evil spirit's upon the purpose person inside of them, taking advantage of them. All right, let's move. And the evil spirit from the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Saul rose up and went to Ram, Rama from the Lord. Oh, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit. What the heck? Yo, the devil's a liar. What? And then evil spirit from the Lord troubled him and Saul's servants and said unto him, behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. They knew. So like I told you, you know when someone's wicked, they knew a spirit troubled him. They knew it. He didn't even know. They knew. How did they know looking at him? We're going to read. It's going to give us a hint. From God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek. Right there, to seek. But what is he telling them to seek? Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is a cunning Cunning player on a harp right there. Now, that's a replacement for Satan because Satan was a musician in heaven. The top musician thought he was high and mighty. Now he got thrown down, cast down. Now, who is it? Come on now. That's crazy. Cunning player of an harp. And it shall come to pass when they, the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and that he thou shall be well right there yo that's crazy music played by a godly person is going to heal someone i told you when you're playing music and doing things with god in mind behind god god's involved he heals he kills he steals he takes out the enemy that's why you praise him in the midst of all things praise god because wickedness is dealt its blow. Harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shall be well. Meaning he'll heal him with playing music. And Saul said unto his servants, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite that is cunning and play at playing in a mighty man of war right there. God literally gives crazy talent to his believers. Crazy talent. They'll be able to fight. They'll be able to do things. They'll be, able to be superstars at sports, be warriors. They'll do amazing things, but you aren't able to partake in the path of God unless you're seeking God. You seek God. Like he told him to seek out a person to heal him. He needs to seek God. You need to seek God. I need to seek God. We all need to seek God, the most high God only. Answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and playing, and a mighty man of war, and prudent in matters 
and a comely person. And the Lord is with him right there. They knew the Lord was with him. People know when the Lord's with you. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, send me David thy son, which is with the sheep right there. He wanted to, what is, God's a sheep herder. We're literally the sheep and he's hurting us. He said, send me somebody who herds sheep. God is, God's here, but David was God's chosen. So David was able to do it because God chose him. He was of the blessed. Let's go. So if you're of the blessed, you have talents. You don't even know God gave you to heal, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine right there. Bread and wine, that's consecration. That's remember in remembrance of God. What did I say? If you're wicked, you'll never be remembered. They're doing this in remembrance of God, giving honor to God. And Jesus didn't even come yet. And they're giving honor to God. No wonder God chose them. They're giving honor to God without no Jesus here yet. Come on now. That's amazing. Bread, wine. Do you not take, and he was with them at the table. Take this, bite this as my body. Piece of my bread. Bread as my body. Wine as my, as my blood. That's consecration. And a kid. So he took a, a goat, that's a baby goat, and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly. And he became his armor bearer right there. The armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Let's go. Armor of God, man. He's bearing Saul's armor. Saul was then wearing the armor of God. David was his armor bearer because he brought him good tidings and he, he was in great he was in great favor. Just like we need to be before God. They were in favor of God. And Saul sent to Jesse saying saying, "Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight." Right there, you want to find favor in God's sight or it's over. And it came to pass when the evil spirit Departed from him. Right there. The evil spirit departed. That we go into Samuel 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. And were gathered together at Shocho. Which belongeth to Judah. And were gathered. Hold on. And pitched between Shocho and Ezekiah. Right there. Hezekiah, excuse me, I said Hezekiah, I'm thinking of Hezekiah, right there. He pitched his tent to praise for God. That's the first thing he went and did in the area he arrived at, right there, by the word of God. The first thing you need to do when you wake up, praise God. First thing you need to do when you breathe, praise God. First thing you do when you're going to do anything when you breathe, praise God. Because if you don't praise the most high God, he could have let you die. He could have let you go, but he didn't. Praise God at all times. And the Philistines, I'm going to read it again. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog right there that from that thou comest to me with staves like leftovers? Oh, you're coming to, he, yo, high and mighty. He's high and mighty. These are the Philistines. Same place David murks Goliath right here he he was high and mighty oh who are you to come to me with anything because i'm me a lot of people are high and mighty think they're greater than they are but when god comes back you're not holier than god what are you going to do against the terrible one because he's coming back now it's no more time he's up before you but you squandered your time yo right there crazy that was crazy son that book is crazy we got to go through that whole joint. Like, that joint's insane, man. Like, you you just squandered your, your place with God. Like, so what are you expecting? You're not expecting anything from the Most High God, who you need it from. So you failed. Therefore, you are a failed creation right there. Now for the crux. All right, Dana White. Joshua chapter 2, starting at the first. And Joshua, the son of the nun, 
of Nun sent out of Shedom two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho, right there. God has holy angels set up in major places in a form you never think. That's watching you, your every move, tracking you, seeing what you're doing. You got to be careful. If you offended that angel, you're in trouble with God right now. You got to walk circumspectly, one step at a time, monitoring your steps, being careful, not being with that whatever. I'm me. I'm going to do what I want. Not like that. Okay. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither to, to nigh night of the children of Israel to them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not where they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out whither whither the men went i i walk i walk not pursue after the them quickly for ye shall overtake them but she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalk of the flax which she had laid in order upon the roof and the men pursued after them were going out right there they ran after nothing so they're heading safe god is your safety and security only god the most high god jesus christ there's no one else nothing else nothing else is going to keep you safe only god and god's leadership of people he puts what favor after quickly for ye shall overtake them but she had bought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with a stalk of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof and the men pursued after them were going out they shut the gate and <laughs> and and therefore they were laid down she came up unto them upon the roof and she said unto the men i know that the lord hath given you the land and that our terror is falling upon us right there. People know when God ain't playing. People know when God's people ain't playing. They know. That's why they be acting funny, trying to do weird things. They know when you ain't play play. They know. All right, let's get it. Giving you the land and that our terror is falling upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you right there. If they shall not fall faint, they'll have strength in the Lord. They ain't got the Lord. The Lord ain't with them. They ain't got no strength right there. You don't have no strength. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. Because that, yo, that represents the third group that wasn't going to hell. That Shul, that, that type group, that other group was at Og and stuff. That's why I got weird names, Shion, Shion and Og. That was the other group. They still go to hell. Whom ye utterly destroyed. And as, as from... Now, as Rom, as we had heard the things of our hearts did melt, neither did remain courage in any man because of you. For the Lord, your, your, for the Lord, okay, neither did there remain courage in any man because of you. For the Lord, your God is God in heaven, above and in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord. And a, I have shewed you 
kindness, that you will also shew kindness, that you will also shew unto my father's house and give me a true token. Your father's house, where all earth is a father's house. We should show kindness to everyone everywhere we go. Right there. What? Swear to me by the Lord, since I have shewed you kindness, that ye will also shew kindness, that ye will also shew kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. Meaning, give you true words of understanding. Leave me with a token, a gratification. Leave me with a token, something worthwhile. Okay? And my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And they know, and it shall be, when the, the thy Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town hall, and she dwelt upon the hall. Right there. She was literally in a position of power. Even though people were in power, she had power of positionality. That's what God gives. Let somebody try and take power against you in a position of power. God gives you the victory because they have no power over you. Because God's over all. He's all in all. And you serve Jesus Christ. Therefore, you're the main man at war. You're a man of war. Like we talked about. That other guy that was earlier. That disciple. Come on, man. You got to be a man and woman of war for God. You got to go for the word of God only. Nothing else. All praise the most high God. Shout out Commenter Nation. Greatest nation since United Nations, nigga. We in here. Another one.